What is your most disturbing, scary, or creepy real story? Serious. Part 5. For more such content, please like and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. Okay, this is 100 true. I'm 23 now, and this happened about 10 years ago, so I was probably 13 or 14. Anyway, I used to skate, board, all the time with my friends, Tim and Brandon. One day, we got done skating, and we decided to go to 7-Eleven to get some food, drinks before we went home. Remember, I was only 13, 14, so we weren't driving. We had skated to the 7-Eleven, and were planning on skating, walking back home. Anyway, we buy our drinks, and we left the store. We walked to the parking lot's exit and prepared to cross the highway. It's not a bust highway, since it's a small town. While we waited for the traffic light to turn red so that we could cross, I looked behind me at the 7-Eleven gas pumps. I noticed a 40 and 50 year old man pumping gas into his white truck. He stared at me, and before I knew it, he dropped the gas pump and jumped into his truck. He slammed on the gas and sped straight at my friends and I. He missed us, but he grazed my arm and knocked my skateboard out of my hand. My friend Brandon screamed, Waff! You fucking dick! As the man peeled out and sped into the parking lot next to 7-Eleven, I swear to God he drove through a ditch, which was between 7-Eleven's parking lot and the parking lot he was in, and tried to run us over again. This is where it got bad. The three of us started running at full speed, across the highway and toward the local library, which is like 2.3 blocks from 7 to 11. When we were about 1.2 a block away, I looked back and saw the maniac speeding toward us. Full of rage, Brandon and Tim ran up to the library doors, and I ran towards the woods. It was Sunday, so I knew the library was closed, and there was a trail in the woods which led to my backyard. Meanwhile, this maniac peeled into the parking lot and hopped out of his truck. I looked behind me before escaping into the woods and saw him grab either a shotgun or a crowbar. I was pretty far away at this point, and I was freaking out so my vision wasn't great. From the bed of his truck, I ran all the way home. When I got to my street, my neighbor, Tim's dad, told me to get in his car because we had to go to the video store, which is where Tim's mom worked. When I got there, I found Tim and Brandon. They ran to the video store after realizing that the library was closed, and three cops. A minute later, my mom came in, crying her eyes out because Brandon and Tim told her they didn't know if I lived or not. Everyone had thought that I was captured. Tim told me that he saw the guy running after me into the woods, which is scary because I thought the maniac was chasing them, not me. Anyway, he was never caught, and I spent the next five years worrying about every white truck I saw. Edit, I forgot the most scary part. My town is small, but it's not empty. There were plenty of people around while this was going on. I felt so helpless, running for my life. While there were at least 100 people around, not doing a thing about it. Also, to be clear, we didn't provoke this man at all. He tried to hit us for no reason, and that's creepy. Brandon called him a dick, but that was after he tried to run us over. We were good kids, trying to walk home, and we almost died. Got seriously hurt because of it. Oh, also, bust highway, busy highway. Account two. First, I was in a bank, I think. Then some guy pulls up a gun and starts shooting everybody. I then wake up. I tell my roommate about the dream. We shared a room. And then he pulls up a gun and shoots me. Then I wake up for real, but I'm mortified because I have no idea if it's real or not. So I just sat there silently until I fell back to sleep. Account three. I took a picture of Spranger Springs, I believe it was called. And not only did my camera die about four times while trying to take a picture, I had to keep changing batteries. The one picture I did get, you could clearly see the outline of a soldier standing next to it glancing downward. Another weird thing was I took a picture of my ex standing under the rocks at Devil's Den, and he made a silly face with his mouth open, but the picture ended up looking like his mouth was stretched super far down his face. Other than that, some pictures just had a ridiculous amount of orb-like things in them. Also, we stayed at the super-haunted Farnsworth Inn there, 
and all night someone was pounding on the wall on and off in the room next to ours, so it was banging even with our heads while laying in bed. We complained about it in the morning to the staff, and we found out the room was unoccupied that night. Account 4. I was asleep in the living room and was suddenly awake, like wide awake. I hear my cat growling and looking over across the room, and I look over to, and see a big silhouette faintly human-shaped. I couldn't see any eyes or anything, but I knew it was looking at me. I slowly sat up and leaned in closer to look at it, and if didn't move, I probably sat there for ten minutes locked in contact with it before a sudden feeling of peace washed over me, and I laid down and comfortably went to sleep. I woke up the next morning and saw nothing there that could make that shape. It is safe to say I don't sleep in the living room anymore. Account 5. My grandfather's company, does timber, mining, was setting up an office in a relatively remote part of a third world county and found a house that was dirt cheap, even for third world country standards. Obviously, there was a catch. The villagers in that area told him not to purchase it since the house was haunted and everyone who had ever lived there died violently. He decided it was just some superstitious BS and got it anyway. So the guy setting up the office will live on the top floor of the house with this family and the lower floors for the office. He moved in with his wife and three kids. Anyway, my grandfather suddenly got no news from him for the longest time. Since this was in a remote part of a third world country, he wasn't too worried since he just assumed they lost power or something. He finally contacted the local police to go check on the guy, since he was completely unreachable. They found everyone dead. Apparently the guy killed his wife, kids, and then himself with a machete. Yes, not a gun, a fucking machete. He actually hacked himself to death. It wasn't one of those cuts on the wrists to let everyone slowly bleed to death. Everyone was hacked down, including the guy himself. The description of the scene had to be an exaggeration, since I'm assuming the sight of five decapitated bodies, including three kids, were scary enough to make people see things, so I won't bother putting it here since I'm not sure what's true and there were details that people could not have witnessed. Let's just say I stopped paying attention after I heard the phrase, Magic Machete. I was told entire room was covered in blood, including the ceiling. Some people were saying the blood on the ceiling had to have gotten there because high threw the bodies around. I had to explain about blood pressure and got tons of weird looks. Now, the weird part, if this isn't weird enough, was that he managed to barricade the door with the bed, with his wife and kids on it, and it's one of those gigantic old beds that's extremely hard to move. The locals say this is evidence he was possessed by spirits, I say moving to the middle of nowhere in some third world country drove the guy nuts and crazy people can do all sorts of crazy shit and even perform crazy feats of strength. Anyway, my grandfather had to pay a few bribes to make sure nothing gets to the press. Not hard, middle of nowhere, about the entire thing and get the police to classify the deaths as natural. No idea how they'll explain that. Third world countries are awesome. All employees in the know had to sign an NDA too. He then tried getting other volunteers to set up the office. Even if they haven't heard all the gory details because of my grandfather's gag order, everyone knew the previous guy died, no one volunteered, he promoted one guy, gave him a fancy title and told him he's in charge of setting up that office. The guy quit. Account 6. I used to work as a cleaner at my school after class, so by the time I left, the roads were pretty quiet as everyone had already walked home. One day I noticed this man walking behind me, not too close but obviously following me. He was quite creepy. His face looked like it was made of plastic and he had a really subtle smile. Anyway, first time I saw him I thought nothing of it. About two weeks later I noticed him again, and from then on I saw him every single day when I was walking home. I didn't tell anyone because I was 16 and I knew my parents would want to start taking me to and from school and that's not cool. Anyway. One weekend, I was walking to my friend's house, which was a similar route to the one I would take to school. As I was turning up the main road that he would follow me back from school on, I happened to look over at a minibus that was parked at the bottom on the road, and I swear to God he was sat in the driver's seat, staring through the windows at me. I called my friend and made it very obvious that I was on the phone thinking it might deter him, but when I next turned around, he was about two meters behind me, with that same plasticky smile, I started to sort of walk 
run, and I could actually hear him doing the same, keeping the same pace and distance the whole time. I was still on the phone to my friend, and I told her to open her front door and wait for me. When I got there, I ran straight in, and we locked up the door. The guy just stood outside her house for about two hours, smiling and staring in the window. After that, I never saw him again, and I've moved away since. But when I went back to visit my parents last weekend, the minibus is still there parked in the exact same spot. Count seven. Most recent disturbing event at half past midnight this past Saturday, I opened the door to let my dogs outside to go potty. As I'm standing there, this enormous rat runs through the door and into my foot. I started yelling, which awoke my boyfriend. We flushed it out of the living room, but now it's behind my stove. I can hear it rustling around. The weather was too crappy to go get traps, so I'm spending yet another night with a gigantic rat in my house. Account 8. To start, I just want to say that I've never been the type of person that gets caught up in the idea of paranormal activities or ghost stories. To me, even at a young age, those types of stories just seemed completely unbelievable, and I could never take them seriously. With that being said, what I'm about to post is something that happened to me a few years ago that pretty much changed all of that. It's not an overly scary story, but I think the simplicity of it is what creeped me out. As much as it did, my mom was in the real estate business, which often required her to check out houses on her own before taking costumers with her. She would usually just do this on her own, but every once in a while she would take me. Well, this house comes on the market that many other agents apparently say is haunted, and my mom figured she'd take me along. I'll be honest, the house was pretty creepy. Completely covered in vines, but whatever. It's an old house. Not really a big deal or out of the ordinary. We go in and look around the first floor, and for the most part, it seems like most houses she takes me to still furnished, and has that smell of a house that's been empty for a while. The first thing that struck me as a little bit odd was that they had one of those old-style box TVs, and it was playing some old black-and-white World War II documentary, and it just made the house seem really old and gloomy. We eventually made our way upstairs to look at the bedrooms. The second floor was set up so that there was one long hallway with two or three doors staggered down its length. The first room was normal enough, but as we got to the second room, we saw it was completely full of stuffed animals. And not the toys, but a whole room dedicated to real stuffed animals, even though I thought that was pretty strange. The room was fine besides that, pretty neat and nothing out of place. And to get out of the room, we went down the hallway to check out the final bedroom, which again was fine. We're on our way to go downstairs. And for some reason, as we pass the second room, I look back in and immediately stop in my tracks because there was now a chair directly in the center of the room. We were both positive it wasn't there before since we would have literally walked into it when we were in the room before. But nonetheless, there it is, sitting directly in the middle of the room like it was meant to be there. Obviously, we got out of the house pretty quickly after seeing that. It was something so simple. But what really got me was that there was no explanation for it. We were the only two in the house, and neither of us went off on our own to check out a room without the other. So how the hell does a chair randomly move in? Arguably the weirdest room in the entire house. I'd consider myself a pretty logical person. And the fact that I can't think of a single explanation for what happened is why thinking about that house still bothers me so many years later. On a side note, in the few years after we looked at the house, it has sold five or six times, with almost all the homeowners saying that strange things would happen when they were in the house, like someone didn't want them living there. Account 9. When I was about four, my dad was a mechanic and found a little ugly chihuahua in a junkyard. He brought him home and my parents were going to take him to a shelter, but I begged and begged to keep him. I even swore I'd watch him since we lived in the middle of nowhere in the plains of the Panhandle in Texas. Anyway, they let me keep him. Mainly, I think, because they didn't think he'd survive. Fast forward five years, the dog grows up to be the most beautiful, big dog you ever saw named Ernie after Sesame Street. By this point, I was allowed to drive a golf cart to my grandparents' house about two miles away after school. The distance was pretty much just big field with a few fences one day 
The battery went dead in the golf cart halfway there. Ernie had followed me like always, and we started walking the difference. All of a sudden, Ernie turns towards me and starts growling. This was a massive dog and I was terrified. I just seen old Yeller too and was convinced that he had rabies. I tried to run past him and he jumped on me before I made two steps. He knocked me down. He stopped growling and just stood on top of me for a minute. When he got off, I started running towards my house. He just stayed there growling at something imaginary. I told my dad and he grabbed his gun, presumably to kill Ernie, and I was freaking out. Like an hour later, I heard a gunshot. Imagine my surprise when my dad and Ernie came back unharmed. Apparently, there had been a nest of huge rattlesnakes in the ditch ahead of me and Ernie had kept me from walking right through it. I had never noticed because I usually drove over the other side where the trail was. According to my very freaked out dad, there was no way I would have missed them. Ernie must have heard them and saved me. TLDR. I talked my parents into saving a chihuahua who turned into a big dog who saved my life from rattlesnakes. Account 10. This is a story that happened to my dad. Now my dad has never been one to make up a story like this before, and he can't even tell the story without getting goosebumps. It happened about six months ago, when my parents we on vacation at a friend's beach house. Out friends always told us about the place next door and that it has had five new owners over the three years they have owned the place. The last guy who lived there actually committed suicide about three weeks before this. But we don't know why. My parents just arrived there for the night. Everything is fine all day until they are getting ready for bed. My dad starts to smell gas. Turns out the pilot light went out, so he goes outside to turn the gas off. While he is outside, he said he started to get chills, and the entire time outside he felt nervous. Once he finds the shutoff, he hears someone say, what are you doing? The voice was so real and pronounced that he actually responded with shutting off the gas. He then realized what he just did and froze. Looked around and didn't see anyone. Thought it was my mother at first. But after freaking out and running inside, she was in the bathroom brushing her teeth. My dad couldn't sleep that night at all. They ended up driving home at 3 a.m. They told our friends, owners of the house, and they looked mortified. They told us the guy who committed suicide not too long ago did so by gassing himself in the house. My dad can't tell this story without getting goosebumps. I don't think I've ever seen my dad legitimately scared in his entire life. Could be a fake story. But the fear he gets in his eyes when he told me the story the first time? I don't think you can fake that. Account 11 about 25 years ago, I was driving to a friend's house and came up behind a car moving at about 15 miles per hour speed on a 40 miles per hour, two-way road. I move into the opposite lane to pass and suddenly the guy speeds up and rams his car into mine, forcing me to the side of the road. That's the scary part. Here's the creepy, miraculous part. This happened on a Sunday in an industrial part of South Tucson, which is primarily Hispanic. When my car came to a stop after being forced over by raging motorist dude, there were two guys standing there ten feet from where I came to a stop. A pale redhead and an Asian. The motorist was exiting his car to come over and do God knows what to me or my car, with an angry look on his face. He took a look at the two guys and got back in his car. I didn't stick around long, but I often think about those two guys just standing there doing nothing but looking out of place in an otherwise ghost town empty part of town and what might have transpired had they not been there i'm not a religious person but if there is an equivalent force to angels in this world i believe that was my brush with a couple of them account 12 this is a bit disturbing and creepy more than scary during my first semester of college my grandmother was diagnosed with terminal cancer i moved in with her and my grandfather to help take care of her she was given two months to live, but made it to nine before passing. Shortly after her death, I would be alone in the house and would see her walking through the hallways or would sense her sitting on a bed behind me in the computer room. It never freaked me, but did catch me off guard. Another time, in the same house, a girl I was dating stopped by and I went out into the garage to get something, and she was waiting for me in the laundry room that was next to the garage, I came in and we hugged for a moment when we both heard a dog running through the house. We could hear his feet. 
nails hitting the tile floor, and the sounds got closer and closer until we saw it round the corner and run directly between our legs and through the closed door and into the garage. We both just looked at each other in disbelief, and then left. He Dog was one that my grandparents owned many years before and that had passed away when I was two. I only remember it from pictures. Count 13. There was a local kid a few years back that would have dreams about a WW2 pilot that was shot down somewhere in the Pacific. In the dreams, he was the actual guy. Really weird stuff, he knew everything about the guy. The ship's name, the pilot's call sign, his best friends, his sister's names. He could even recall conversations that the dead pilot had with his buddies. I think 60 Minutes or something like that had a special on him and checked all the information the kid had about the pilot and it matched up perfectly. The kid had never read, watched anything about WW2 before. The kid's dad wrote a book about all this stuff, really interesting and creepy.